of Jesus. Now lift up your two and shout amen like never before. There is advance. You advance to your next level. You advance. You advance. You advance. You advance. You advance. At the word of the Lord today, the news break out that we elevate you. Nothing is holding it any longer. Nothing is withholding it any longer. That visa is coming right now. That visa is coming right now. That opportunity is coming right now. That app is coming right now. That progress is coming right now. That breakthrough is coming right now. Come on, shout it! Oh, there is an abundance of rain. The Lord said to me that the three days fasting and prayer next week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, is start. The Lord advanced me. If you have Holy Spirit, you must know that we are in the realm. You are entering into new advancement for the second half of the year. Where they used to meet you, you have relocated. <laughs> Somebody did not hear that. Where they used to meet you, you have relocated. Your spiritual level will be high. Your financial level will advance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout to somebody beside you, I have advanced. I need you to shout to somebody and demonstrate it. Why will you be shouting and remain where you are? I have advanced. Celebrate the Lord and take your seat. God bless you. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Oh, I see, I hear the abundance of rain. It's starting in your home. It's starting with me. Shout it, it's starting with me. Glory to God. Now you remember that we began to dig deep into the dimensions uh, of spirituality. And you could connect that uh, we started by looking at the misconception of spirituality. And we look vividly and critically about the meaning of spirituality. And we dive into some important thing that makes you spiritual. Something that is a pillar of spirituality as you walk part time with God. And we began to see some issues about our life, about our walk with God in spiritual life. Oh God, we came to a conclusion last week about how God speaks. How do you hear the voice of God? How did God communicate his intention to you? Because sometimes uh, God might be speaking to you and yet you will lack an understanding to pick it up probably because your spiritual sensitivity is low or sometimes you could not ascertain what God is saying. Then throughout last week Wednesday, we looked critically, patiently, how God speak that God did not only speak to pastors, God did not only speak to prophets, God did not only speak to deacons, God speaks to his children. Because there is a spirit that bears witness in our spirit that we are what? The children of God. So any born again Christian that is not hearing the voice of God is a bastard. It's a bastard. You, your father will not be speaking and you will not know. Most of the time, you have not trained yourself. You have allowed the things of the world to choke your heart, choke everything God is saying, and you couldn't pick the signal of God for your life. So we dealt extensively about four important things in which God speaks. The word of God, which is the primary way in which God speaks. God wants to speak to you via his word. Do you remember? Now the second thing is through inward voice, your conscience. Oh God, the voice of conscience. God wants to minister to you. God wants to speak to you. God wants to communicate to you 
via your conscience. And sometimes we look very critically five things that can happen to conscience. One of it is your conscience can be seared. Do you remember? So when you did not pay full attention to your conscience, you become a victim of circumstances. So God speaks through your conscience, but God is not going to stay by speaking through a conscience. You see, a believer that is speaking or that is speaking the voice of God via conscience is still baby. God wants to move you to inner witness. Do you remember? Oh, are you here with me? Inner what? Witness. That is what we call the voice of intuition. The, the voice of premonition. You just know that something is about to happen. But you cannot figure it out. You cannot pick where. Please, is, are you following me? You cannot pick out and where those things is going to come. But you know in your spirit. There is a witness in your spirit. That something is about to happen. It can be good. It can, you just know that no, something is not right in this place. Something is not correct. God is speaking to you. Sometimes we say, something tells me. It's not something. It's what? The Holy Spirit. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? Very, very important. And we got to the third part, which is the voice. The, the inner voice. We call that voice authoritative voice. It's the voice of the Holy Spirit that comes to you that eats you and you cannot control it. Do, do you remember? It just comes, boots, and you cannot control it because the old, you have grown to a level where you have trained your heart and your heart is functioning well. Listen to me. The work in this Christianity starts from the heart, not from, not from the physical. Are you here? God will not focus on the physical force. He wants to work upon your heart. So your heart becomes very important because when God wants to speak, he wants to check a clear heart, a heart that is void of worry and anxiety so that he can speak to him. However, God wants you to know that he is a speaking God. And he wants you to pay attention by listening on daily basis on how to pick his voice, document what he has said, and you begin to enjoy it. At this point, I want to ask questions. Before I now start the series of financial freedom. After last Wednesday, people came to meet me in the office. And they were raising questions. And I was answering them. So I thought so much that I should spend about 10 to 15 minutes to deal with the question in your heart about how God speaks. What are other areas that you are still struggling with and we can give, pay attention to so that you will not need to visit a prophet before you hear the voice of God. Is somebody here with me? You will not need to do tokini tokini bambaruas before you know that God is what? He's speaking. Are, are you here with me? Please, are you here with me? Please, are you here with me? So, it is important that we treat the questions in your heart. So that we are not going to go through spirituality. And you don't have questions. And you still have some questions that is not sorted out. Is that good for about 10, 15 minutes? Oh, people did not answer me. Hello? Am I speaking to a living church? Can we do that in the next 10, 15 minutes? So if you have question, can you please put up your hand and let's give you number very quickly so that question we know about questions. Do we have? Don't look at the back. Kill on say so bossy face phone. Don't look at people that are those that work. it is because we are looking at the back that they put down their hand. And if you are not if you are not as bold as lion, something you are not a righteous person. <laughs> All right. Questions. Even if you have asked before, he ask. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, no question. You want to write your question? Okay, write it so that we can read it. If you don't want to collect mic and ask. Ah, Jesus Christ. Ushers, are they writing? 
They are writing questions. You are, you are sitting there, you are not walk, walk, walking around there. How will you be sure? Please, is there any question? Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Number one, don't give. Number one, here. I'm looking for, because after he asks questions, you are raising up your hand. I will not answer. Number one, is anybody asking questions? Do we have mic? Only one question. All right. Praise God. Okay. Sir, I just want to ask that uh, as God uses all this channel to speak to us, can the devil also use this same channel to speak to us? Then okay. if yes, how can we determine if it is the devil that is using that channel to speak to us or God? God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Does, do we have any other person writing? All right. Good. We want to answer that question. Let's give room for people, elderly people, younger lay people. Let them give answer. Before I start, do we have anybody who want to give answer? Please. All right. <laughs> we already have two people right now. Is it question or answer? Answer, oh yeah? Uh, please help me do something about this mic, please. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I think everything still boils down to our relationship with God. Just like the um, pastor taught us that, okay, the verse we read last week, my, I know my sheep, my sheep knows me. So if we have a personal relationship with God, you already build a connection. You know how God speaks to you. There's no how you hear the voice of a stranger. And... You will, you will know. So it has to do with the in depth of the personal relationship with God. All right, thank you. Oh, please, can you let me celebrate her? Please let me celebrate her. She's, uh, she's Mami Gio in making. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, all right, Bro Sunday, there is a brother here that uh, very brief. All right. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I believe that um, the same way God speaks to us. Please listen. Devil can also appear uh, in that same uh, channel. For example, when the devil wanted to uh, tempt Jesus, he said it is written that the, 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 the angel of the Lord will, will not let you fall. I don't know. I'm just paraphrasing. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So what I'm saying is that the same way, uh, the same channel through which God speak, the devil can also use that medium as well. But the, the, the good news there is that if we read, I will read uh, Romans 12, verse 2. It says, I'm reading from good news. It says, do not conform yourself to the standard of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind then you will be able to know the will of god so knowing the will of god is to know that ah this one that is coming it is the will of god this is the voice of god when the mind has been completely changed and has been conformed to the things of evil praise god thank you thank you thank you who who have other Things to say. Yes. Grandma over there. Praise the Lord. Uh, using human experiences. Holy Randall's. Always we have original. And we have the fake. And it's your bama original. The dana and yoshikini. You are fake. So original is Christ. Fake is the devil. The two may be working Paris pursuit, but if you don't know the original, you are falling for the fake. So the bottom line is be familiar with Christ. Know him so that when the fake comes, you will be able to. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other one? All right. Now, listen. Just as everyone has said, 
It is very, very correct. As God is speaking, devil is speaking. Are you getting me? And devil uses the secondary means more to speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? Devil uses the secondary means more to speak. What are the secondary means? The dream. The prophecy. The circumstances. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, several other ways that are secondary. He uses that to confuse and to manipulate. You understand me? Now, you must understand and work effectively in your, in your relationship with God. Whereby you have trained your spirit to pick the voice of God. Most of the time that devil wants to come to manipulate you in the primary ways, it comes by thoughts. Hello? It comes by what? By thought. That is why we must learn to capture every thought into the obedience of Christ. You understand me? So, when the Spirit of God is ministering to you, Via his spirit. And the spirit. Your spirit which is the candlelight of God. Pick up that spirit. What the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Interpret it. To you in your heart. You must also understand. That devil is also there. To manipulate. What the Holy Spirit. Is saying to you. So as God is speaking. The devil is also speaking. Now, this is where you will come to understand. Every word of God that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you can be judged by the word of God. So how do I know the difference between God is speaking to me and the devil is speaking? The standard is what? Bible. You know when the devil is using Bible in a different way. Because you have the spirit of God inside of you. And he has given you designing of spirit. That is why can I beg you. Your relationship with God matters. Are you here? Your relationship with who? With God matters. Now, when God speaks to you. You judge every word of God that is saying to you. By his word. And not just one word. By two or three, uh, we will confirm. By two or three witnesses, we will confirm the truth. As you are judging it with one word, another scripture will come up to tell you that I am He that is what speaking to you. The problem we have is that people are not reading Bible again. So when you know the Word of God, you understand the Word of God with the Spirit of God inside of you. You will be able to judge every thought of the enemy and capture them in the obedience of, of Christ. So the first way and uh, one of the perfect way to judge and differentiate the Holy Spirit from the other spirits. Are you with me? Is your, the word of God as a standard. The second way is patience. Do you hear what I said? Patient. One of the ways to test what God is saying to you is to learn to wait. When God speaks to you and you are doubting or you don't, there is another voice coming. You don't rush to take step. You do what? You wait. After judging it with the word of God, don't rush. Still what? Still wait. And keep praying. As you pray, God will grant you clarity. You understand me? In our generation, our problem is that we are always in in haste. So, the moment God speaks, we want to we want to move. So, in relationship, when a lady when a brother comes to propose to a, a lady, and the lady prayed after 10 days, after one month, and she want to go and say yes, and come to report to us, we ask such person to wait. We want to test with the test of patience. Please, do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? 
The same way in every other thing. If God is ministering to you that you should do some certain thing or you, you carry out some certain thing and you are not, you are not, you are confused. You are not actually sure. You don't jump. You do what? You wait. Look at when God appeared to Moses. God took time. Please, are you getting me? A hey, brother to be the question. Look at the brother that asked question. God took what? To clear all his doubt before he now agreed to do what? To move. So please, I will beg you, build a solid relationship with God. One. Two, I want to beg you, let the word of God, I think Philippians 3 16. Only let this war richly do what? Dwell inside of you. If not that Jesus knows the word, the devil will, will defeat him. So let the word of God dwell richly in you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then learn to be patient. Learn to be what? To be patient. In fact, the fourth thing. The fourth thing that is also important is carry your spiritual father along. If you have one. Yeah, if you have one. Carry your spiritual parent, father, or who you submit to along. In every dish. Yes, sir, I am hearing this thing in my spirit, but I don't know. They have higher grace and higher dimension. They will be able to judge. And you will be able to know if it is correct or it is not correct. Please, are you here with me? Many of, you see, many of you doesn't understand the essence of covering spiritual parents, spiritual fathers over you. They have power to cancel. They have power to retain. If you have been faithful and you have served and you have been a good follower. So, in the multitude of cancer, there is what? Safety. That is why you must locate somebody where you carry along, you submit to, and you always share things you are confused about. By the time you begin to discuss it, the light will be done, and they will put you through, they will put you through, they will put you through. You will be able to understand that this is the voice of God, and this is not the voice of God. Did we answer that? The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Can we proceed now? Oh, you didn't answer me. Can we proceed now? There are two powerful scriptures as we continue the series of financial freedom that I want to quickly share today. I don't know how fast I'm going to be today, but if I'm, if I'm not done, after Covenant Sunday, we will continue. Because I have some other things to discuss about this financial issue. All right. Open your Bible with me to Proverbs 22, verse 2. Very powerful scripture. Proverbs 22, verse 2. You continue from the jottings of second, of second service. You understand? You continue. Those of you that you have watched online on our YouTube, you continue from there. Very powerful scripture. Please, can we read this scripture together? Hello? Can we read this scripture together? Oh, you didn't answer me. Please, are you back to financial freedom? Yes, eh? Can we continue now? Now, all right. Look up. Look at that screen. And let's read that scripture together. Make sure somebody beside you is reading that scripture. One, two, go. Let's go. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Now, look at that scripture. The rich and who? And the poor, they have what? They have one thing in common. This thing, one thing in common. However, the Lord is the maker of them all. Now, did the Lord make them so? You didn't get what I'm going. The Lord made them all, but he didn't make them so. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I, I'm trying to bring, build up this scripture. Please put our scripture there. 
and let's there is difference between make them all and make them so. Am I correct? Now, he make them all the rich and the poor, but everybody determine what they become. <laughs> he make them all not so. So, in this dimension we are treating, you choose what you become. Please, are you following me in this, in this church? If you want to be rich, who make that decision? You. It is not Nigeria. It is not your job. Because I've seen people that have a good job, yet they are poor. So, everyone that become rich in this kingdom, everyone that become wealthy in this kingdom, they are the one that made that decision themselves. Not anybody, not their parent. Hello? Oh, are you here with me? Do you remember the prodigal son? Hello? Oh God. Do you remember the prodigal son? Do you know the parent was rich? And hand over riches to him. But because he has never made a decision, he squander the money. So, excuse me, that you have a good inheritance from your good parent does not make you correct. It's a matter of five years. He made them all, but he never made them. So, what God do for us is that everything he made, he made them perfect. After he made everything, he said, they, he, he looked at what he made and said they were what? They are good. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. But you can choose to be otherwise. So your choice is important, sir. As we do this for this time, please, can I beg you? Hello? Please let me talk to somebody beside you and say, are you hearing, Pastor? Let me ask, let me talk, let me talk. I want that person to be alive. Are you hearing, Pastor? If you are not touching somebody, it is wrong. You are not doing well. You are not obeying me. Touch that person and say, are you hearing, Pastor? So look at that person and say, your decision. I want you to please say, your decision. Look at me, look at me, look at me, people of God. Nobody can make me sad. If you are sad, you want to be is my decision. No situation, no circumstances can make me sad. It is my decision if I want to be happy. It is not my situation. It is my decision if I want to. Please, are you following me? So in this, if you want to rise, it is not in too much prayer. It is a decision. You pray and you add it with determination and what? Combined with serious hard work, you will rise. But you may not be smart. <laughs> Amen. So, as we journey in this dimension of financial freedom, you've got to resolve in your heart that I am making decision in this church to rise. To be wealthy. To be rich. Even though I don't like rich. Is to be wealthy. Because I'm going to show you some things today. Please are you following me? It must be a what? It must be a what? A decision. Your choice. Do you know that you are here today? Is a choice. Oh you didn't understand me. There are some people seated here that they have gone through a rigorous thing in their place of work. That after closing hour, they should go and sleep. But they said, today is midweek service. I must come to church. I want to congratulate those of you like that. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Because there are things that God is batting in your spirit that you cannot know of now. Until dimensions of... See, don't see coming to church as ritual... The day you come to church and you come to church with the mentality that if I don't come to church, they will ask of me, you are sick. You come to church that you want to come and encounter who? 
and you don't walk the lengua to church, you run when you are late. It is a sign of honor. That excuse me, I honor who? I honor God. That is the way. But it's a choice. It's a choice. There are three types of people on earth. Three types of people, three types of people on earth. You must understand their differences and you choose which one you want to become. Hello? Please, am I still communicating? Can I still go on? Please, are you here? Three types of people. Number one, the poor. How do you know that this person is poor? The poor always think about money. Please, how many of you are following my teaching today? Hello? Probably let me come down so that I can see your face. As we, as, we, as we differentiate this thing very, very, you will know the category where you belong. What is the first set of people that are in the world? Uh, please talk to me in Jesus' name. What is the attribute of the poor? Everywhere money. When they enter the church, the first thing they look at is uh, money. Everybody that always think about money is poor. They have poverty mentality. Do you understand? And a good example is Judas Iscariot. Do you remember Judas Iscariot? Somebody was servicing the Lord, his master. Oh, do you remember that scripture? Shall I please look for that scripture in John? Jesus Christ was preaching and he was sweating. He was doing everything and to make sure that the life of people prosper. Are you with me? And this woman was looking at Jesus. That, oh, what else can I do to satisfy my maker, my Lord? And the woman said, everything that is treasure inside of me, I will pour it to him. To him. You know what she did? She carried an alabaster box. Do you remember? And pour it on Jesus. He said, all I have my treasure. What makes me a woman? I pour it. What men see in me and they cherish is no longer mine. I pour it to who? To Jesus. So everything you see about me is Jesus. No any other thing that matters but who? Jesus. She poured it. And do you know she didn't stay there? The Bible says she carried a hair. Beautiful wig. A woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly. Do you see that scripture? Very what? Costly fragrant oil. And she do what? She poured it on his head as he sat at the table. No, no, no. I don't need it. I don't need it. Thank you. God bless you. Let me celebrate my protocol. God bless Bring it. Bring it. Oh, please. Please, are you following me? Please, don't be distracted. Please, are you following me? See, those of you that I'm sharing some deep things with you and you are making it to lie, you think I'm joking. You are on your own. I am sharing that that I took from the Lord on daily basis to you. you because I am saying it and you think I am joking. I am, not a, I am not a comedian. All this thing you are laughing every time. You better stop laughing. And focus on the teaching. Do you understand that? Look at that scripture. Do you see that scripture? The Bible says he poured it on his head as what is the next scripture? Verse 8. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, why this way? You see poverty mentality. The poor always think that 
Ah, if somebody gave church 10 million, say, oh, he's just wasting money. They don't know that he's repairing his destiny. Poverty in Africa, we will eradicate it in this church. Yeah. There is nothing much you can give to God that you can pay what he has done for you. Nothing. No, nothing. He said, look, what is this waste? The disciples are, ah. they say, they say, they say, the next verse, the next verse, verse nine, for this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to who? To who? The poor are calling some people poor. And that is the dimension we find ourselves in the church. Some people that are actually poor in their mentality, they are calling some people that didn't, that didn't have anything, they call them poor. Excuse me, that you have money does not make you rich. Your mentality is what determines how rich you are. Somebody gave all to God. Can somebody hear me shout all? Oh. To Jesus and somebody said, is a waste. Excuse me, I see some of you you are working tirelessly and you are faithful to your service. And somebody is saying you don't have work. Don't worry. It's a matter of time. It's a what? You are pouring everything you have for the law. And somebody say he doesn't have work. That is why you will always see him in church. It's a matter of time. Destiny will determine that. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. If serving God pays me, it will pay anybody on earth. That is, that is faithful to service. I tell you, I tell you, sir, service took me outside. Service took me everywhere. Serving, pouring water in people's hands. Serving the law like man. Everything I have got, everything that will become is for Christ. It's not because I'm a pastor. I have been doing that before I became a pastor. You'd wake up. Don't be like our mothers and our fathers that when they wasted their youth, they now resolve when they are at their old age. Huh? Wake up! Spend your time now. For who? For God. For God! Anything God cannot give you, devil cannot give you. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody can what? If devil give you, it's temporary. Look at that scripture. Very powerful scripture. We are looking at very serious scripture for much has been given verse 10 but when jesus was aware of it you are you didn't give me you are giving me much i said you should give me john version it was john you see this verse uh, this matthew said the disciples john specified the person john said who judas is correct it is not all the disciples that are not correct it is one person so the first set of people here on earth, are you with me? Eh? Is the poor. And how do you know the poor? They always think about everywhere, everywhere they enter, they think. But one of is what? Do you see that scripture? John chapter 12 verse 4. Do, please, can you see it? Oh, you didn't answer me again. Can we read that thing together? One, two, go. But one of his disciples, what is his name? Simeon's who would do you see credentials yes why was this fragrant oil not sold for do you know the guy see no diamond oh you didn't see what I saw that guy she, he used to do shop shopping and do you know what he used to look for Fragrant oil. The Bible says <laughs> he knew the what? The amount. He said 300 denarii and given to who? Listen, I want you to read something in this scripture. Can you read the next? Is it the next? Yes. This is, please, can you read it? Please, read loud. Let me hear you. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money boss and he 
used to take what? Do you see Judas? Oh, you didn't see Judas. May you not be Judas. In my former, former church, before we moved to Illinois, there is this man, an MD of a Nigerian paper mill. An MD, Nigerian paper mill. And you know, in a typical Baptist church, I, please, I, I, will, I will forever thank God for our Father and the Lord. He taught us where. And I must confess, He taught us where. If they are using card to determine that you are paying tithe, you are not a mature Christian. Do you hear what I said? You are not a what? If by now you don't know that you, could, you should give your tithe, then you are, they, now you, they now give you card. They mark it on Sunday. You pay today. You, they write it there. You are saying, I, I also pay. You are not mature. You are not what? Now, you know what happened? In that place, in the church I'm talking about, the MD will now pay package his tithe and pay it. And you know the finance, is it finance, finance committee or what, what do they call them? They know, they know the numbers. They will put number, they won't put name. But they know the number, they record. Those that are. So if they have been studying the amount the MD is paying. One day, two of them now went to meet him. I said, ah, don't you have anything you'll be using money for? Do you know that's why some people doesn't pay their tithe? That's why some people doesn't even transfer their time. Nobody have your time. You are not doing for anybody. You are doing for your... He said, you, don't you know? You are, this money is too big. You divide it. And that one went to meet pastor that this is what happened from now. I will be transferring my tithe into your account. You will be paying it. Because we have arm rubber. We are and it's not their fault you know their fault what is their name they are what they are poor so the first set of people is that you are going to see is the poor people and how do you identify the poor people everywhere they enter everywhere they go they think about what Money. number two the rich the rich people always think about material things that is how to identify the rich they want to display what they have. Hello? Oh, are you following me? The rich want to display what they want. What they have. Yes, excuse me. Do you know we have this? Don't bother yourself to quickly look and be mm, they are what? They are the rich. The rich always want to announce that our child wants to do wedding they will collect five hall together. Just to show. You now know the funny thing? After everything, they may now begin to pay the debt. They don't care. We want to show that we are, we are there. It's a terrible mentality. Please, are you following me? Hello? You didn't answer me again. The rich, we want to show that we are something. And that is the problem of Yahweh guys. They do people and they want to show people that money they. You know they do competition. Oh, you didn't answer me. Okay, because you don't understand. They do competition. If somebody carry Ferrari, is it the latest car now? Oga, is Ferrari the latest car? No, which is the latest car? They star. Eh? Okay, if someone carry the latest car, enter now. The other person will just go and verse and say, excuse me, let me go and do what? You see, in, the, in church too, people are doing competition of what they have. People are doing what? I don't know where, hello, I don't know where I have said that, maybe in family discipleship, I was telling them about a professor where I minister, uh, where I went in Lagos that was mopping the toilet. Is it in the service? Okay, it was in the service. You will never know that this is part of the board that is controlling the church. Please, are you here with me? Please pay attention. I don't want distraction. I want full attention. 
here. The rich, the day you have something and you always show you are a baby. Do you agree with me? How many of you have bought Christmas clothes? You bought Christmas clothes and you tell your child that it is Christmas clothes in, in September. <coughs> what do they want to do? Let me wear it. Let, you are a baby when you are showing everything God has given you. You just want to show hope and let people know that we have arrived when you are not. Please, am I teaching financial freedom? Are you following me? You are a baby. So, come to a point where you, your mentality advanced from being poor, from being rich. How do you identify the third people? They are wealthy people. Mm. How do you identify the wealthy people? They think about ideas. The third set of people are ideas generators. Oh, Jesus. Give my people understanding. Ideas what? Generators. So, look at me. People of God, please, are you following me here? Eh? Yeah? So, I bring out money and I give a wealthy person that has a great mindset. Are you with me? I give such person $1,000. Are you getting what I'm saying? They don't rush to buy anything. They enter a retreat to think. Ideas that can multiply $1,000. Oh, do you understand? People like that may be slow in achievement, but they are greater than those that are showing. So when you give somebody 10,000 naira, and after three days, he or she has squandered the 10,000, you will know that he or she is poor. But a wealthy person always generates what? Ideas. To maximize the resources in their hand. Please, am, I, am I teaching church? Please, are you following me? So, which one are you? You have to determine which one are you so that you can begin to reorientate your mindset about money. We are talking about financial freedom. So that every one of us will be wealthy. I want to talk about seven dimensions of wealth. But time has gone. But let me show you something as I conclude today. Can I show you something as I conclude today? Hello, you didn't follow me. Can I show you something as I conclude today? I, I need three brothers. So please come. Three brothers. Thank you. Thank you. No, Pastor, please see. Thank you. Please go there. Now, please look at these three brothers. Hello? We want to know the three stages that every man can get to in their mindset. Are you with me? And this is how to know that somebody has entered the level of being wealthy or not. Hello? This is a guy that is under the bridge. Tattered. Please, are you following? Tattered. No money. All these, hey, 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 guys. You know, hey, hey, guy. They jar anything, guys. Uh, people like that. Are you getting me? You meet such person and you tell that person you've got to change. We don't have to remain here. You will get better as you follow some and say, hey, Allah, yeah. Ibi Lama Akusi. Nigeria di Bajer. Kusinga Kantole. 
Please, are you following what I'm saying? Eh? Now, this person, there are two things that is affecting him. The first thing, his mindset has been conditioned that this is where. Please, are you following me? And it's reflecting in his uh, appearance. Please, are you following that? That's the first level of poverty that you must understand. This person, we met him under the bridge. And I said the same thing I said to him. And he said, okay, I'm going to live here. But now I don't have where I will be sleeping. I will go and hustle. you. I will be sleeping here. But I know things will be better. Do you understand me? The cloth has not changed. But what has happened to his mind? Please, do you follow him? Are you following me? Eh? Now, this person has begun, has entered the level of wealthiness. Because being wealthy is not first and foremost physical. It's first and foremost in the mind. Please, are, are you getting what I'm saying? So, the guy did not have a place to sleep yet. The guy did not change his clothes yet. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? But something has happened where? Do you know People that always say that I am Mishimada. Even though they don't have anything, they say, ah, I am Mishimada. You know what has happened to their mindset? They know that something will happen to them that will be better. Even though nothing has changed in their, in their appearance. Are you getting me? Now, this is the second level that he has gotten to. Being wealthy or the mentality of people that are worthy as from where now look at the third person please look up the art i mean the mindset has changed and it has affected his clothes so uh, by now he has gone to a point where what he has said here is now coming to manifestation the mindset has changed and he now went out and said, I can no longer sleep here again. Oh, you don't understand me. Something has happened to him that, excuse me, how can I? It's not pride. It is a change of what? Are you confused? So, in this process of financial freedom we are talking about, it is beyond Tight and offering. We are talking about changing your mindset in such a way that you begin to manifest what God has called you to manifest. This same principle is the same principle in believing the word of God. He said, by his stripe, by his stripe, you are what? When? When were you here? In the past. So you now carry a mentality that is different from the pains you are experiencing. That say, excuse me, I am what? Is there the headache? Is there the pain? Do we still have the pain? Do we still have the headache? But you know that something new will happen. And you are no longer thinking about where you used to be. You are already thinking about where you are going. It is. It has to do with your... How many of you understand me? The reason why healing is not common is this. The pastor is seeing you ill, but you are seeing yourself crippled. Please go and see. Please, do you understand me? So as we journey in this month and some part of next month, understand that God is not first and foremost addressing your physical. He's addressing your what? Your mindset. So when a mind has changed, it will affect the whole way you think. That is why in discipleship, we are not looking for do and don't. We are talking about your heart. If your heart changes, it will affect your life. Please, is somebody hearing me? So when I see some people that still misbehave, I don't blame them. Something has not happened to where? To the heart. You, do, hello? Hello? Do you know that at what age did God circumcise Abraham? 
Is he Abraham now? Eh? Abraham, at what age? He appeared to him over 70 or towards 90. And he said, we will circumcise you. Circumcise all the male in your house, including him. Excuse me. When you see, hello, <laughs> when you see Abraham walk, was he walking like this? Uh, you didn't answer. On Ketan in me. Because he is not born where at that age to walk very See, when you see somebody that is not yet circumcised, eh, he will be misbehaving. What your target is look for knife. Eh, and cut his heart. The first major and permanent change that happened to a man is from where? So when they capture guys, young boys, in Boko Haram, you know the first thing they do for them? Hello? Do you know the first thing they do for them? Hello? Do you know the first thing they do for them? The first thing they do for them is that they entice them with money because of poverty. They come to them, they now work on their heart. They indoctrinate them. They tell them that this is what something, something has happened. This is what, they tell them negative, 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 negative things. So they began to raise hatred in their heart so that they can attack. It is an indoctrination. So when they caught them and they asked them, why do you, are you doing this? You know what they said? They said they have done us havoc. Which havoc? It is the voice of what? And they have clouded their mind. And they are. Can you walk upon your heart today so that things will change very fast? Please, how I desire that you will help me invite people both Sundays and Wednesday so that we can be liberated from poverty. So when you see people that are rich and they want to do in our, you know, in our, what do they call in our? And they tell you that we have calculated for 300 people. And we are going to do this. You are not going to say they are greedy. You waste money in the patio. And that's why most of you are not rich. Talk less of word. You squandered money. Excuse me. These people that you are wasting money for. Sometimes. Baby. You know what I discover? They will not bring gift. They will still condemn what you are giving. They say. Ah, ah, in fact. They are my mind no sweet. Excuse me. One of my pastor friends wanted to do naming and he was borrowing money to do naming. I said, are you see? He said, ah, I can't, with my status as a pastor, I can't be, I can't, my church members are coming, I can't be distributing biscuit. I said, is it church that gave birth to you? Whatever you have, do what? Share, yeah, don't borrow money. You think they will give you money? They won't give you money. He said, eh, if you, if you get me, say, church members, if I see here too, all you these church members, they will tell you that, ah, are we not paying the salary? Well, nonsense salary, they will do it. Really. Go and share biscuit. And that day, he heard in a woman shop, and she, he share biscuit. And all of us receive biscuit and say, glory be to God. Glory, <laughs> glory be to God. Glory be to God. The boy is now in secondary school. Those people, go and ask them. After everything I asked him, I said, All the offering, you know, we are in school. If you do like this, not lie, nothing did there. <laughs> we are in school, in seminary. We, are, we have used all the money to buy hand out. So, yeah. How much do you do they, the offering and the give? He said, Sincerely speaking, now God, see me, I hear you. I said, How much? Don't just say that. How much? He said, 7,000. And they want to borrow money. Most of you are not a giver. You, are not, you don't give to people that give up. You don't give to anybody. You still go there. You collect one bag of rice. You say, ah! I conclude today. Please, ushers, collect offering. Huh? I conclude today. Hello. May the Lord bless your offering in Jesus' name. I conclude today by telling you, Hello. Please hear me. I conclude today by telling you that you don't compare yourself with anybody. Cut your coat 
according to your clothes. <laughs> eh? This is what I have. And I do what? And Please, are you following me? This is what I have. And I do what? And I do it. How many of you understand my teaching today? Oh, Jesus Christ. How many of you, please? I want to be sure. Do you understand what we have done today? Can we proceed on Sunday? Ah, okay, on Sunday is Father's Day. We can't prune. Can, can. well, the guest speaker will be coming to proceed. So please, let's keep praying for the guest speaker. But on Wednesday, next week, ah, next week, Wednesday is also fasting and prayer. The Lord advance me. Bro, ayo, the Lord advance me. Mm, we want to see the flyer today. God bless you. So please, let us continue to pray. I know that God has given us an agenda that we should continue for this financial freedom. We will continue it until we are able to get to a point where God will move us to family enrichment uh, month. So please, Lord, just let's follow. Invite people and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Do we, do we like to pray for one minute? Rise to your feet. Let's pray for one minute. Uh, we want to pray against negative mentality so can you can you can you hold somebody no don't hold somebody face that person you are going to point to that person please in case you are not praying for that person turn your turn turn to another person i rebook negative mentality in your life i'm the one that i've been speaking since it is time for you to pray so say in the mighty name of jesus i can't hear you shout in the mighty name of jesus Shout, shout, shout. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree negative mentality, poverty mentality. I banish it in your life. Now, nah. open your mouth and pray for that person in the name of Jesus. Please pray for that person.